Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be explaining the scan function, which is a dynamic array function that is especially useful for cumulative calculations such as running totals. In this video, I'll explain what the scan function is, how it operates, and I'll take you through a real world example where you can benefit from this function. This function is particularly useful if you're dealing with data sets like sales figures, financial reports, or any kind of data that benefits from cumulative calculations. And as of the time of creating this video, the function is available only in Excel 365. But before we start explaining the scan function, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the scan function takes two inputs. The first input is the initial value, which is the value we're starting at. And the initial value is an optional argument or input to the scan function. And if ignored or bypassed, Excel will assume its value as a zero. However, for the sake of clarity of instructions on this video, we are going to enter it explicitly each time we use the scan function. And then the second input is a lambda function. And although we haven't created a video about the lambda function yet, you don't even need to understand the lambda function in order to use the scan function because the inputs are standard. However, we'll be creating a video about the lambda function soon and we'll be leaving the link to the video in the description of this video. So make sure to check the description of this video for the video about the lambda function if you're interested in learning it. But as I said, you don't even need to understand the lambda function in order to use the scan function. All right, so let's dive into an example to make it easier for us to understand the scan function. So here, let's say that we have these numbers here and we would like to calculate a running total for these numbers. So for example, when we process the first number here, which is one, the running total would be the accumulated value and the accumulated value will be the value until the cell just before the cell we're processing. So we're processing this cell. So the accumulated value would be until the value of this cell, but actually the value in this cell, which is in light red, which is a zero is just our initial value. And it's not part of our data set. So I'm just putting it here for clarification, but it's actually not part of our data set. This is our data set. All right, so it would be this value here, which is our initial value, plus the current value, which is gonna be a one. So the result here should be one. And then in this cell, the accumulation would be zero plus one, plus the current cell, which is two. So the result should be three. And then the result in this cell should be the accumulation until the cell before this one. So these cells here would be the accumulation, which is gonna be three plus the value of the current cell, which is four. So the result should be seven and it should go on and on until the end of our data set. So in order to do that with the scan function, we'll write equal scan and then our initial value, we're gonna hard code it as a zero, but you can also refer to a cell for that. And then our array that we're going to process to create a running total is gonna be this array here and then the function is gonna be a lambda function and we'll be giving this lambda function three inputs. The first input is the variable representing the accumulated value and I'll call it ACC, which is the first part of accumulated just to give it a descriptive name, but you can give it any name. You can call it A, B, C, X, Y, Z, whatever you wanna call it. And then the second input is gonna be the variable representing the current value, which I'm gonna call VAL for the current value here. And then the third input is gonna be the calculation that you would like to do with these two variables. So in this case, in order to create a running total, we'd like to add them. And as soon as I start typing ACC here, you'll see that the intelligence in Excel recognizes that I have a variable called ACC. So you can see here that I can choose it here from the list and then I'll write a plus sign and then VAL and you can see here that the intelligence also recognizes it. So I'll choose it using tab on my keyboard and then I'll close my brackets here for the Lambda function and I'll also close them for the scan function and press enter. And as you can see here, now we get a running total. 
where you can see here when we start processing this cell the ECC variable is a zero which is the value of our initial value because the accumulated variable here is until the cell before the current cell we're processing so we're processing this cell so it's until this cell here and this zero actually is not part of our formula because we have the zero hard coded here as the initial value so even if I delete it it won't make any difference so I'm just putting it for clarification so the ECC variable is going to be zero and the val variable which represents the current value is going to be one which is this current value here so zero plus one is going to be a one and then when we're processing this cell the ECC variable will be zero plus one our initial value plus the value before it here which is going to be a one and then our current value is going to be a two so the summation is going to be a three here for ACC plus val and then when we process this cell the accumulated value would be two plus one plus zero which is going to be a three plus the current value which is a four and this will result in a seven and it goes on and on until the end of the data set and of course if you change the initial value to a one then your results will change as well let's just change this for clarification as well so as you can see here now the running total becomes two on the first cell and this is because you started at one instead of starting at a zero so one plus one is two and it goes on and on till the end of the data as you can see i'll press ctrl and z twice to make the initial value a zero again and of course this text in gray here is not part of our formula or of our calculations so this is just for clarification so even if i delete it nothing will change here on our calculation i'll press ctrl and z to undo that all right so let's see what happens if your numbers are not in a single column like this but rather in a matrix form like this. So here we have our numbers in a matrix that is two by three. So it's two rows and three columns. So what happens if you use the scan function to do a running total? So this is the same formula that we've used on the previous example here, except that we've just changed the range here to be this range. So what happens is that the accumulation goes from left to right. And then when we reach the right border, we continue accumulating again from left to right. So for example, when we process the first cell here, the accumulation variable is zero and then the current value is one. So so the result is zero plus one. And then for this cell here, the accumulation variable here is zero plus one, which is one plus two. So the result is three. And here the result is gonna be three plus four, which is gonna be seven. And then we'll continue accumulating again from left to right. So for this cell here, the accumulation variable is gonna be these cells here, which are seven plus the current value, which is six resulting in 13. And then it keeps accumulating from left to right like this one. So this is when we do an addition, but if we do a multiplication where we multiply the accumulation by the current value instead of adding them, then we need to start from a one because if we start from a zero, for example here, so if you make the starting point is zero, then we'll get all the values to be a zero. And the reason for that is that we're multiplying here the zero, which is the value for the accumulation at the beginning by the current value here, which is one. So it's gonna be zero by one, which is gonna be a zero. And then this is gonna be the accumulation value, which is gonna be zero by one, which is a zero by two, which is gonna result also in a zero and so on and so forth. I'll press Control and Z to change it back to a one here. So also the accumulation will go from left left to right and will continue as well accumulating from left to right and these are the results here. So this is just something that I needed to point out which is that when you have your numbers laid out as a matrix like this and not in a single column then the accumulation goes from left to right until you reach the right border of the matrix and then you continue accumulating again from left to right. All right, so let's see one of the practical applications of the scan function, which is to create a year to date calculation. So we have these sales figures here for different months of the year. And if we need to do a year to date calculation, we can use the scan function and our initial value is gonna be a zero. And then the array is gonna be our sales figures that we have here. And then the function is gonna be a Lambda as we did on the previous examples and our first parameter here is going to be the ACC variable and then our second input or parameter is going to be the val 
variable here, which is the variable representing the current value. And then our third input is going to be the calculation, which is going to be our accumulation plus the current value here. And then we're going to close our brackets for the Lambda function and close the brackets again for the scan function and press enter. And as you can see here, we managed to do a year to date calculation here for the sales figures using the scan function. So for the first month here, which is January, the result is just the sales for January. But then for the second month here, which is February, the result is going to be the sales for January plus February. And then for the third month, the sales are going to be the sales for January plus February plus March and so on and so forth. And this goes on and on until December. But what if we have the results for the new year? And what we want is that when we get into the new year, the accumulation resets. So the ACC variable were reset and we start accumulating the sales figures again from January of the new year. So the result for January 24 would be just the sales for January. And then for February 24 would be the sales for January plus February and so on and so forth until December. And then the accumulation resets again in January. 25 because we've entered a new year and so on and so forth. So how can we do that using the scan function? So to do that, we need to modify this formula. So the first change here we need to make is to extend here our array to include all the sales figures here. And then the second modification is that we need to put a condition to test if the current month is January. And to do that, we'll actually use the reference to the current value, which is the value of the sales figure in the month here. And then we'll just offset one cell from it to the left. And we we'll use the offset function to do that. So we we'll write an if function here to test a condition. And what we're going to do is that we're going to use the offset function and we'll refer to the val variable here. And if you don't know how the offset function works, then please check my video about the offset function and I'll leave you the link down below in the description. So we start at the val variable here as our reference or starting point, And then we need to move zero rows and we're going to move one column to the left. So this is our starting point here. And then we need to move one column to the left to refer to the current month, which we're going to do by supplying negative one on the columns argument for the offset function. And then the height and width are just going to be one as default value. So we're going to close our brackets here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to test if the month of that value here. So using the offset function, we're going to refer or point to the month, the cell containing the month. And then we're going to test if the month of that is not equal to one. So if it's not January, then we will do our usual calculation, which is to add the accumulation variable plus the current value variable. But what if our month is January? So this is if the month is not January, but if our month is January, then we'll do something else. Well, let's try doing a zero for that. So if our month is January, we'll put a zero. Let's try that and we'll close the brackets for the if function here and we'll press enter. And as you can see here, we get a zero actually in January, but this is not what we want. We don't want a zero in January. We actually want to make the ACC variable is zero. So to do that, what we're going to do is so instead of putting a zero, we're going to multiply our ACC variable by zero and then add to that the value variable here, the variable for the current value and we'll press enter. And now, as you can see here, we started January, we get the value for January and then for February, we get the value for January plus February. And then when we enter into the new year, you can see here that we only get the value for January. And then for February of the new year, we get the value for January plus February. And then for March, it's going to be the value for January plus February plus March and so on and so forth. And when we enter into 2025 as well, you can see here that the accumulation resets and we only get the value of January. And then for February, we get the value for January plus February and so on and so forth. So as you can see here, now the year to date calculation works. And 
even if we need to reset the accumulation when we get into the new year, we made a modification to do so. All right, guys, so that's it for the scan function. As you can see, the scan function is a dynamic array function that is useful for cumulative calculations. And let me know your thoughts about the scan function down below in the comments section. All right, so if you like this video, please make sure to give it a like and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all future videos. And please make sure to follow us on social media. You'll find the links down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.